Hi and welcome. In this video, I will try to do three things. First, I will mention some experiments that seem to suggest that perception is cognitively penetrable. Then, I will try to clarify the notion of cognitive penetration by distinguishing between A, top-down influences that can be attributed to information processing driven by the visual system, and B, top-down influences that can be attributed to information processing driven by the cognitive states of perceivers. Lastly, I will try to show that these experiments only provide evidence for A. We know that cognition can influence action. For example, your belief that it's raining outside may cause you to reach for an umbrella. We also know that perception can influence cognition. Going outside and seeing that no raindrops are falling, for example, may cause you to think that you're not going to be using your umbrella. The question we are interested in is whether cognition influences perception. This is a question about the possibility of cognitive penetration. Cognitive penetration refers to the influence cognitive states, such as beliefs, desires, or intentions, have on perceptual experience. For example, does my belief that apples are red influence the way apples appear to me? In the 20th century, cognitive penetration was the core tenet behind the New Look movement in psychology. In the 80s, criticism from philosophers and psychologists led to the now orthodox view that perception is not cognitively penetrated. Lately, however, this orthodox view has come under considerable attack. So does cognition influence perception? Some argue it does. I will briefly mention two such arguments, first by Marty and Nguyen, and then by McPherson. Marty and Nguyen use experiments about facial expressions to show that the perception of facial expressions is cognitively penetrable. In one such experiment, Carol and Russell showed subjects a picture of a woman's face and asked them to evaluate her facial expression. They initially reported that she looked sad. However, when subjects were given a context, for example, when they were told that even though she made reservations at an expensive restaurant, she was made to wait for over an hour while the waiter repeatedly gave available tables to other customers, they reported that she looked angry. March and Nguyen argue that these results cannot be attributed to the judgment subjects made about the facial expressions. So it must be the case that subjects had two different visual experiences when they viewed the same facial expression in each condition. So, according to them, this is a case of cognitive penetration. McPherson uses an experiment about color perception to show that color perception is cognitively penetrable. In an experiment by Delkin Fellenbaum, subjects were asked to match the color of various cutouts made of the same reddish paper by adjusting the background color. Subjects match the cutout depicting objects that do not have characteristically red colors with a background color that was reddish orange. However, these same subjects match the color of cutouts depicting characteristically red objects such as apples with a background color that was more red than the background color they chose for the controls. Similarly, McPherson argues that these results cannot be attributed to the judgment subjects made about the color of the cutouts. So it must be the case that the subjects had two different visual experiences when they viewed the same cutouts in each condition. Let's frame the discussion in relation to vision theories. The dominant model of visual perception posits that information is processed in a hierarchical or bottom-up manner from low-level subcortical and cortical areas to higher-level cortical areas. The term top-down is used to describe the opposite direction of information processing, from higher-level cortical areas to lower-level cortical areas and subcortical areas. Hierarchical bottom-up models suggest that the role of visual perception is to form accurate representations of the external world. Some, for example, argue that visual perception begins with the analysis of simple features such as orientation and culminates with complex aspects of the visual scene such as shapes and objects. Mark postulated that visual processing involves three steps. The first level, which he calls the primal sketch, takes raw intensity values present in the retinal image and makes explicit information required to detect surfaces. The second level, the 2.5D sketch, makes explicit the orientation and approximate depth of surfaces in a viewer center frame of reference. That is, it is organized with reference only to the viewer. In the last level, the 3D model representation, it makes explicit shapes and their spatial organization in an object center frame of reference seen by the perceiver. 
In this case, the emerging image is independent of particular positions and orientation of the retina. Top-down models, on the other hand, suggest that the role of visual perception is to provide information that is essential in successful behavior. This suggests that far from merely reconstructing visual scenes, the visual system constructs a hypothesized reality. Indeed, you can fool the visual system into misreading the properties in the external world by following the instructions on this image. The debate about whether perception is cognitively penetrable can be situated within the debate about the role of visual perception. Those committed to the bottom-up model of visual perception tend to deny that visual perception is top-down modulated in the relevant ways and argue that perception is not cognitively penetrable. While those committed to the top-down model postulate that visual perception is top-down modulated in the relevant ways and argue that perception is cognitively penetrable. This is important because studies show that top-down modulation is seen at all stages of visual processing, including subcortical areas such as the LGN. One response to such evidence by those who deny the cognitive penetration occurs has been to accept that feedback processing takes place in early vision, but deny that it is perceptual, say because it is either pre-perceptual, involving attention or allocation, or post-perceptual, involving decision-making. Indeed, the debate so far has focused on whether perceptual top-down influences are exerted on early vision. So what's early vision? Well, Marr identified it first with the primary sketch and later with the primary visual cortex where the primary sketch is constructed. Pelician defines it functionally in terms of the psychological properties, quote, a mapping of various substages involved in computing stereo, motion size, and lightness constancies, as well as the role of attention and learning, end of quote. More recently, Raftopoulos defined it in terms of response latency, the process lasting no more than 100 to 120 milliseconds post-stimulus onset, as a pre-attentional state which includes lateral and recurrent processes devoid of cognitive signals. Some argue that early vision is not cognitively penetrated, while others argue that it is. My view is that this question is misguided. Following Pelician, let's take cognitive penetration to be a semantic thesis. On this view, if your belief can alter the function your visual system computes in a way that it can alter your visual experience, then your visual experience is cognitively penetrable. The Mueller liar illusion is the quintessential example for the claim that cognitive penetration does not occur. The line on the top continues to look longer than the line on the bottom, even after you come to believe that they have the same length. To answer the question of whether cognitive states, such as beliefs, can alter the function your visual system computes in a way that it can alter your visual experiences, I distinguish between a. Top-down effects resulting from computations performed by the visual system, such as color constancy, whose function cannot be altered by the perceiver's cognitive states in such a way as to produce changes in visual experience, and b. Top-down effects resulting from computations whose function can be altered by the perceiver's cognitive states in such a way as to produce changes in visual experience. To explain cases associated with A, I used the famous blue-black dress that made headlines when a picture of it was posted on social media. People were baffled when they realized that the dress appeared black and blue to some, but gold and white to others. I argue that the studies that purport to show that cognitive penetration occurs, such as the two I mentioned by Martin Nguyen and McPherson, can better be explained by reference to top-down effects resulting from computations performed by the visual system, in this case color constancy, whose function cannot be altered by the perceiver's cognitive states in such a way as to produce changes in visual experience. This phenomenon can be explained in terms of failure of simultaneous color constancy. For example, when the visual system treats the scene as illuminated by bluish light, the dress looks gold-white because it discounts the illumination. But when the visual system treats the scene as illuminated by yellowish light, the dress looks blue-black because it treats the objects as being in shadow. To see the full argument for the claim that these experiments support A but not B, you will have to read my paper. Thank you for listening.